preach on taking, <laughs> honoring God's man's while I preach on the night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love this church. You guys do a great job loving me. I know this is just a way you show your affection. I can't wait to show my affection to some of you later. <laughs> and somebody said, I walked in, they said, welcome to the funeral. I said, man, who died? <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, I will say this. 40 is coming a lot quicker than I thought it would. Amen. And uh, from what I understand from many of you, it don't slow down. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I, I pray the Lord gives me length of days. Amen. Amen. And that God gives me a long life to serve him and live for him. And I don't always do everything I'm supposed to do, but I truly have a heart's desire to please the Lord. Amen. And uh, I want God to bless us and help us. And uh, I, appreciate, uh, I appreciate our church family. I really do. It's just one of the greatest people in all the world are right here at Bethel Baptist Church. Amen. And uh, I can tell you this. You, uh, you go off and visit churches and go into other places. and uh, It won't take long for you to recognize what God's blessed you with here. And when I say that, I mean the spirit that this church has, the people that the Lord has put here to serve him together. And uh, I just appreciate it so much. And I hope the Lord gives us many, many days ahead to serve him. Amen? Yes. And uh, I just thank the Lord for his goodness, the Lord for his goodness and his grace. Right before the message tonight, maybe somebody very quickly has just a quick testimony tonight. Just a quick testimony of the Lord's goodness. Maybe God's worked in some way. Maybe God's been a blessing in your life. Anyone like that? Anyone like that? I have to get up and preach and talk all the time, so I'm trying to give somebody else an opportunity to. And uh, maybe, real quick, just the Lord, maybe a blessing, uh, a blessing. And uh, good, Brother Jim? I just, again, want to thank the Lord for his faithfulness and for he never, um, his promises that we can always trust God if we have to transition through things. You're right. And how he uses that to glorify him. And mm -hmm. I just want to just thank, praise the Lord that even in Tim's death, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God's ways are not our Amen. ways, right? His thoughts are not our thoughts. God always knows what he's doing. Anybody else real quick? Real quick. Yes, sir, Brother Craig. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Just some of the best people in the world here. Anybody else? Very quickly. Very quickly. I want to preach. Amen. Let me share it. All right. Genesis. Take your Bibles. Go to the book of Genesis chapter number three. Genesis chapter number three. I'm going to give you the title of what I'm going to preach on. You may change your mind after I get done, okay? I'm going to give you the title of what I'm going to preach on. Principles of personal presentation. Principles of personal presentation. Say, Pastor, what is that? Sounds like a big, long set of words that means something different than what it says. Principles of personal presentation. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter number 12, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse number 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right? Amen. I'm, I'm, re I'm quoting Romans chapter number 12 right now. Stay with me, Miss Wendy, all right? All right? You guys think I'm the one with the problem, all right? Just hold your place in Genesis chapter number 3. I know some of you can't keep up with the reading, so I'm going to quote it to you, all right? He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12, verse 1, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And the way that we do that is not by being conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. I believe it's important how a Christian presents themselves. One of the ways that we often think about this is in our dress. Somebody says, well, Pastor Ryan, are you going to tell us how to dress? I don't, I, I'm not, I don't have to do the job that God already does a good enough job doing. My dad always said, I'll never tell anybody how to dress. I'll never tell anybody what they should or should not wear. God's, good, God's big enough to do his job. Amen. But I do believe when we think about church, we ought to know that it's important how we present ourselves. What's the purpose of church? Well, church is a social gathering. Church is a place of 
friendship. Church is a place of preaching. It's a place of singing. We can say all yes to all of those things. But the purpose of church is this, to worship the Lord. Can we all agree on that statement? That we come to church to worship God. If we want to come to church to develop friendships, I'm glad we do that at church, aren't you? I'm glad I have friends that are Christians. I have, I'm glad I have friends here that encourage me and I can encourage them. I'm glad I have folks that I know that are here that are praying for me and I can pray for them. I'm glad I know that there are people here that are uh, unified in their desire to accomplish something and do something for the Lord. I'm glad all of that's present at Bethel Baptist Church. Would you say amen to that? But that is not the purpose of church. The purpose of church is to come and worship the Lord. And I believe that the Bible teaches us that when we come to church, we are to do the very best that we can do to present ourselves to the Lord in a way that honors Him. Amen. The Bible tells us, Romans 12, we just read it or quoted I quoted it to you. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A couple of things I want to point out about that verse. He says, I want you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. He did not say your heart. Here's the excuse many of us use when we want to live in a way that displeases the Lord or we want to act in a way or behave in a way that displeases the Lord is we'll say, well, God knows my heart. God didn't ask you to present your heart. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And then the standard is not set by man. The standard is set by God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. So when we think about presenting ourselves and how we present ourselves when we come to church or how, when we worship the Lord, we need to understand something that God expects us to present our bodies and it is God that sets the standard. Holy, acceptable unto God. When I was younger, my dad would say something like this. He would say, son, would you do that if the Lord was standing beside you? Would you go that place or would you say that or would you behave in that manner if the Lord was standing beside you? And the answer most of the time was no because I knew that if, if the Lord saw what I was doing or if I thought that the Lord saw what I was doing, I might not do it or I might not behave in that manner. I believe that God's house ought to be a place where God is worshipped. I believe church needs to be a place that is not only encouraging and pleasing and helpful and desirous of you, but it ought to be a place that God is encouraged, that God is pleased, that God is uh, happy to be a part of. And I think so often in our culture, we're afraid of this topic of modesty. And let me be honest with you. I believe there are a lot of preachers that approach this topic in the wrong spirit and the wrong manner. The guideline in the Bible is modesty. The end. Amen? Well, what about that verse that says, well, a woman ought to man ought to obtain that pertains to a woman, all that kind of good stuff. In Bible times, most of us men wouldn't want to wear what they wore in Bible times. Amen? Can you imagine us walking in here in some togas this evening? That would look nice, wouldn't it? Amen? It would look wonderful, wouldn't it? The principle is modesty. You say, Pastor, what's modest? God, the whole, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit resides in your heart. And God makes it very clear that He is able to accomplish through you and in you what He desires to accomplish. It's not many times that we do not know what God wants. It's many times we do not like what God wants and we desire to argue with Him. What is the principle? What are the principles of personal? Why do we go to Genesis chapter number Number three. Why did we go there? Take your Bibles. You're there. All right. Look in verse number nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now, you know what's happened here, right? There in the Garden of Eden. What did the Lord say? He said, Don't take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, Don't take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, Everything else in the garden, anything else that you want, it's yours. Every, he said, Adam, you're over everything. Just don't take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did Adam, Adam and Eve do? They disobeyed the Lord. There was, a, there was a routine that Adam and the Lord had every day. You know what it was? They would come down and they'd walk in the garden in the cool of the day. But when Adam disobeyed the Lord, something changed. As by one man sin in the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for all of sin. What happened? Sin. 
That's what happened. And the Bible says that the Lord comes to the garden and he asks a lot like he asks uh, in the New Testament where he says, how are we going to feed these people? What does he say in verse number 9? He says, and the Lord said unto Adam, where art thou? Did God know where Adam was? He sure did. He said, Lord, where art thou? And he said, verse number 10, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Man, this is, this is like a mom and dad, this is like a dead child conversation here, isn't it? Well, why, why in the world would you be afraid, Adam? Who told you? They are, he already knew all the answers. Have you ever been set up by your parents? Amen. Man, they already knew all the answers, and you're trying to figure out as a kid how much information they had on you, you know, how long the sentence was going to be, right? He says, who, who, told this, who, who told you? And he said in verse number 11, he said, Who told you that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? I have commanded that thou shouldn't eat. He said, Have you done what I told you you shouldn't do? And the man said, The woman thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. What do we do with our sin? We try to hide it. Where was he at? He was hiding. We try to justify it. And we try to blame someone else. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Man, the Lord's just doing business with everybody. Aren't you glad they didn't put your name on the list, right? And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise, thou shalt bruise his heel. That is the first promise of the gospel in the Bible, Genesis 3.15. It's the first promise of the gospel that, listen, God would send, listen, the seed of the woman between, the, between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and the seed of the woman will bruise his head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire to be, uh, thou shalt be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I have commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth uh, to thee, uh, shall it bring forth unto thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, and till, till, uh, till thou return into the ground. For, thou, <clears throat> for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and to the dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. We think often that the way that we behave or the way that we operate as a Christian uh, can be justified or excused or blame can be passed because there's always a reason that we have for why we are where we are. We're good at coming up with excuses, aren't we? I was given an article this week by a young lady who addressed the topic of modesty. And she made reference to growing up in a Bible preaching. I know the church that she grew up in very well. She made reference to a Bible preaching church that she grew up in. And she made the statement that when she was younger, she, was, uh, she lived under this idea of oppression and legalism because of a standard that was set in the area of modesty. What she tried to do in the article that she had written was she tried to justify what she had become or how she was acting. She tried to blame someone else for it and she tried to make an excuse for it. And I thought to myself, we live in a culture that does nothing but that. The idea of personal responsibility or the principle of personal responsibility is something that is not taught or acted upon in the culture in which we live. Let's find someone else to blame. Let's give an excuse on why we can behave this way. And let's justify it because obviously the people who taught us what they taught us were out of their mind. 
Can I say something very quickly? I'm thankful for those who've gone before us, who taught us biblical principles, who, whether we want to agree with it or not, have helped us to become the Christians that we are today. Let me say that again. I'm thankful for those that have gone before us who taught us biblical principles and preached biblical principles, whether we liked them or we did not like them, that have helped us to become the Christians that we are today. Amen. Every one of us has someone in our life that God has allowed, to, allowed our life to intersect with that has helped us to grow and mature in the Lord. I remember thinking when I was just out of Bible college that I had it all figured out. And the truth of the matter is I was dumber than a bucket of hair. I didn't have anything figured out. The truth is I didn't know which way was up, which way was down when it came to ministry. But I think one thing that we need to be mindful of, I believe one thing that we need to be mindful of or a certain area that we need to be mindful of is the attitude or the, the presentation, our presentation to the Lord in the matter of worship. We do not come to church for men. We come to church to worship the Lord. And the further we allow things to slip, the, e the, the easier we allow things to slip, the further they will go. Can I say something to you? Modesty is not a, is not a forbidden topic. Can I make a couple of statements before I get into the message? Just shut that thing off. Can I make a couple of statements before I get into the message? Modesty is a scriptural principle. You can argue different opinions and different ideas, and I'm not going to preach to you opinions, and I'm not going to preach to you ideas. You can argue different opinions and different ideas, but you cannot argue modesty. Would we all agree on that? Amen. So we know modesty is a scriptural principle. The second statement that I want to make before I get into my message is this. Modesty encourages holiness. Immodesty encourages immorality. You cannot argue with modesty being a scriptural principle. And you cannot argue with the fact that modesty encourages holiness and righteousness. And immodesty encourages immorality. Would you agree with that? Okay, so we're all on the same page so far. All right. Good. The third statement I want to make. The standard that you set about your modesty is between you and the Lord. The standard that you set about your modesty is between you and the Lord. God makes some very, very clear principles in His Word. There's some things that we are they're, they're not going to be debated. But Pastor Brian is never going to show up at your home or you're never going to come to this church and say, hey, you know, I feel like God wants me to be here. And we're never going to ask you, okay, so, so what do you wear on Monday? Could you please uh, bring your closet and let's just check out everything. That's not going to happen. But the relationship that you have with the Lord, God's Holy Spirit will do that. Somebody says, well, how, should I wear this or shouldn't I wear it? If there's a question, it's probably the Holy Spirit going, you might want to reconsider. Just a helpful hint. If there's a question, if there's a concern, maybe it's the Holy Spirit saying, hey, let's, let's rethink this thing. By the way, God's a gentleman. Amen? Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. God says, I could kick the door in and walk right in and take over whatever I wanted to do, but I don't do that. He said, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if you'll let me in, I'll come in and sup, we'll sit down and we'll talk about things. But you're going to you're gonna have to understand, God's a gentleman. He's not going to just barge in. He's going to work in your heart and life. So modesty is a scriptural principle. Modesty encourages holiness. Im immodesty encourages immorality. You set you, the standard that you set is between you and the Lord. So how do we present ourselves? I think if we look at this passage of Scripture, you will find some principles about pre presentation and worshiping and your relationship with the Lord in this area of modesty that will be helpful to you. The first thing I want to give you this evening is this. Clothing was created and designed by God. Look at what the Bible says. Go back to the passage. 
where the Bible says, where the Bible says in, uh, in uh, verse number uh, 7, he says, And the eyes of them both were opened. Why were they opened? Adam and Eve, why were they opened? Because they sinned, right? All right? Modesty is an issue because of sin. Do you get it? Modesty is an issue because of sin. So the eyes were open. Look. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, there are two principles. One principle I want to point out here to you. They made themselves fig... They, they, the Bible says they sewed aprons. They made, made aprons for themselves out of fig leaves. If you skip over in chapter number 3, and look down with me, if you would please, in verse number 21... Unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin. Is there a difference? The Bible says aprons. Now, I'm not going to get descriptive, but aprons didn't cover too much. And God said when, he, when God showed up, when, God's, when God was present, you get, listen, the Bible says we, we know God's always present. You understand, right? Listen, the eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. All right? By the way, what I'm doing here tonight is trying to help this church 20 years from now. All right? The Bible says, listen, that man and woman, Adam and Eve, thought God was nowhere around. You follow me? So little was good enough. You follow me? The fig leaves, the apron, hey, just cover a little, it was good. But when God showed up, he said, no, no, no. When I'm present, you better cover up. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. He said he made coats of skin. They took aprons, the Bible says, and, and that was good enough. But when God showed up, he made coats of skin. Clothing, get it, clothing was created and designed by God for a necessary purpose. What was the purpose? What was the purpose? Why did God create clothing for him? Look in verse number 21. Look back there in verse number 21. The Bible said, An Adam also... And unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. Look, why, why did God clothe them? Why did he clothe them? Adam, where art thou? Adam! Adam, where are you? Where was Adam at? He was hiding. Why was he hiding? Because he was what? Why did God make clothing? For a covering. God said, I created, I designed. Vera Wang can take it to the bank. God created the first clothing. Amen. He said, I designed clothing for a necessary purpose, and that purpose was covering. That's what he said. He said, listen, no, the apron, it don't work. Who told you you were naked, Adam? Sin. Sin had, had messed up what God had created. Sin had destroyed that perfect environment that God had created. Sin had, had the, the, the path of, of man was forever changed because of sin. The thought process, the idea, the, the whole, whole shoot match was different because sin had entered in the world. And God said, I'm going to create something that will help fight against sin. What was it? Clothing. How we present ourselves. Listen to me, I'm, I'm not talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's between you and the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. But I'm telling you, when we show up to the house of God, and by the way, if it's, if it's right to do it at God's house, it's right to do Monday through Friday, amen? But when we show up to the house of God, we expect God to be present. And if we expect God to be present, we need to be obedient in this area of presenting ourselves in a way that honors Him. He, he, he presented, he created it for, for covering. The Bible said Adam made aprons. He said this is good enough. And God said no. Of course, we know the principle. Because of sin, a, sin a, an animal had to be slaughtered. And a covering had to be made. Why does the blood have to be shed? So that we can come into the presence of God. God said I made a covering. You know, the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all righteousness. The Bible tells us it covers our sin. The Bible says that that blood is a covering. When those animals were shed, it represented the blood of Jesus. That when those animals were killed, it represented the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. When we come into the presence of God, friend, we are to present ourselves in the right manner. Amen. God said, I designed clothing. I designed that, covering for, uh, that clothing for a purpose for a necessary purpose, was covering. So how do you present yourself when you come into the presence of God? 
By the way, God just doesn't show up on Monday. I mean, Sunday. He, he shows up. He's there Monday, too. How do we present ourselves? Second thing that I want you to see is not only was clothing created by God for a necessary purpose, and that was covering. The second thing that I want you to see is this. How you present yourself is a direct reflection of your attitude and heart towards God. How you present yourself is a direct reflection of your attitude and heart towards God. Now, stop for just a moment. I'm 40, so I'm going to sit down and take a rest. All right? get, get. Stop for just a moment. When we think about modesty, here's, here's the challenge that many of us, many, many Bible-believing Christians, preachers, struggle with. When we deal with the subject of modesty, we often want to address women only. We often want to say, well, listen, you know, ladies, ladies, ladies. Do you know, I, I've seen men who present themselves immodestly. Yeah. And, 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 and when we think about presenting ourselves to the Lord, it goes much further than just the way we dress. Yeah. It, it goes much further than just the fact that we are dressed. I've seen some guys walking around town, they got themselves dressed, and I, I like to teach them how to dress. When your pants are sagging past your hind end and you got your shirt pulled up and your hat's turned sideways, you're not presenting yourself properly. I just thought I'd plug it in. Amen. That's all right. Somebody better teach young men how to be young men again. They look like, act like, behave like slobs, get tattoos across their face and wonder why they can't get a job. Amen. Where was I at? Here we go. We often want to refer, we want to say ladies. <coughs> Young men, when you come into the presence of God, you ought to act like you're coming into the presence of somebody important. I, I have a hard time with preachers who can get up in front of their congregation and look like they, they're going to TGI Fridays after church, and then they can show up at the White House in a suit and a tuxedo to, to present themselves right to the president. Listen, we come before one that's more important than the president, amen? When we walk in these doors, we're coming before an almighty God, and if our heart's not right, and our attitude's not right, we won't present ourselves right. Hey, listen, I believe God deserves the very best. I appreciate I saw one of our bus kids this morning come in church, and uh, listen to me, I appreciate our bus kids. I appreciate the folks that work with those bus kids. And listen, this young man's been coming to church for a while, and man, he had on a, he had on a pair of pants, and he had on a vest, and they didn't go together. They weren't, they weren't matching. It wasn't a set, but he had his very best on. He had a tie that didn't go with anything, and man was sitting on the front row, and as soon as Brother William, the orchestra, got out, he moved over here, and he started putting stuff everywhere that needed to go. Man, I thought to myself, that kid is here to worship the Lord. Many times we forgot we come to church to worship God. We don't come to church for a social club. We don't come to church to get petted and prodded. We come to church to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you walk in and we don't present ourselves properly and we're not dressed properly and we're not behaving properly, it's a direct reflection that our heart and our attitude is not ready for worship. You say, how do you, how do you get that out of Genesis? Look in Genesis chapter number 3. You there again? I'm not just ranting and raving. I'm helping you. All right, look what he said. Adam, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked. What was he doing? He was hiding. So here's God. God walks into the church. And our attitude and our heart's not right. Guess what we're doing? We're going to play Mr. Avoid. I'm going to go over here. I don't want God to know what's going on in my life. Let's just get over here. All right? We're going to get away from the Lord. We don't want to be around God. Hey, you, Adam, Adam, I, we'd walked in the garden before. We'd been in the garden the cool, the cool of the day. Many, many times before, Adam, why were you hiding? Because I wasn't in a place where I was ready to worship. I wasn't in a place where my heart was right with you. And you know what? I realized it. I wasn't in a place where, God, you could speak to me. And I knew it. I knew it. Adam said, my nakedness, my nakedness was a sign there was something not right. Isn't that what the Bible said? What did he say? Adam, where were you? He, listen, Adam, Adam already knew he was in trouble. He already knew. Adam, where were you? I was busy tending the sheep. I was busy taking care of the lions. Plant the field. No, no. What did he say? Adam, where were you? He said, I was, I was naked. I, I, I had been revealed. And he said, because of that, 
I couldn't be near the Lord. The way we present ourselves, the way we prepare ourselves for worship, the way we interpret modesty directly reflects our attitude and our heart about the Lord. Why did Adam want to get away from God? Because he knew he was naked. Why do often we, we instead of trying to get right with God, we, we want to excuse how we behave and how we act, and we want to blame someone else, like the young lady I was telling you about earlier. I want to blame somebody else for why I am the way I am. Why, why do we do that? Because we know our heart's not right with God. The standard is still Christ. Be ye holy, for I am holy. It's God that sets the standard. I don't have to ram my standards down your throat, and you don't have to ram my standards down, uh, your, your standards down my throat, but every one of us better be obedient to the standard God sets. Our, our attitude about modesty and presentation and presenting ourselves in the Lord's house directly reflects our own heart and attitude about worship. Somebody who comes in and they don't care that they're half naked is saying to God, I don't care what you say. Somebody who comes in and they look like a slob because they, they, they just feel like doing that is saying to God, I don't care what you think, God. You're not going to get anything from God. Christian, I'm talking to you this evening. I'm t listen, hey, it's all right if you say amen and help me out a little bit. We still believe the Bible. Hey, I'm not preaching you my preference. I haven't told you one thing that I think that Brian Cooper thinks you ought to do. Amen? Preacher's preferences get them in trouble. But the Bible never will. And you know what I'm telling you is Bible tonight. Amen? I don't like preaching these messages. Anybody want to trade? I don't like preaching them. People say, well, preachers get up and they just want to rant and rave. Not a true pastor. A pastor that loves his people don't, don't like approaching these subjects because they're sensitive and they're, 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 they're touchy and there's issues and there's phone calls and there's emails and there's text messages and there's frustration. But what I'm doing is trying to protect you and your family and your children and your children's children in this church and this ministry. When we walk in this place, we ought to have a heart and, a, and an attitude that's ready for worship. You say, how do I know? Look at how you behave on the outside. The third thing. Number one, God created clothing for a purpose. What was the purpose? A covering. The second thing, that how we present ourselves is a direct reflection, amen, of your attitude and heart towards God. Where did, where did God find Adam and Eve? Hidden. Why? Because they knew they were naked. They knew they were naked. I, I've seen it happen. I, I've been over, I, I shared this story, I think, one time. I went over and visited a guy. One time, my wife and I went over and visited a guy one time. He invited us over for dinner. I don't know what the guy was thinking. <laughs> invited us over for dinner. And we're sitting there eating dinner, and I, my, my drink ran down. He said, just grab you another Coke out of that. was back when I was wrong and wicked and drinking Coke and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> I'm just kidding. He said, just grab you another Coke out of the refrigerator. And I opened up the refrigerator, and there's a six-pack of beer in the bottom of the refrigerator. And he knew, man, oh, man. Mm. He said, what'd you do? I didn't say a word. Man, the food was good, so I wasn't complaining, amen? <laughs> About 30 minutes later, I, I, I watched him. It was just like a, a switch flip. He started getting... All of a sudden, the food started tasting bad, you know? And he, I, I could tell he thought. And he, it took him the whole 30 minutes to come up with this line. Honey, when's our neighbor coming over to get their beer out of our refrigerator? <laughs> truth be, that's truth my hand up. He said that. I said, man, I'm just going to give you kudos on the story, man. That takes guts right there, you know? I've been around young ladies sometimes, and the preacher walked in and started doing this. Never said a word. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God's going. God says, 
I created it for a reason. He said, and how you present yourself is a direct reflection of your heart towards me. The third thing I want you to get here. Last thing and we'll be done. We still all right? You still glad you brought the balloons this evening? The third thing, get it. How you present yourself can hinder others' ability to worship God. Not only does how you present yourself reflect how you worship God, but it can hinder others' ability to worship God. Let me give you an illustration. How many of you are married? Did you raise your hand? You're married? How many, you, how many of you ladies remember your wedding day? You remember your wedding day? Man, you remember your wedding day? My wife never forget our wedding day. <laughs> Greatest day of her life next to getting saved. Amen? <laughs> it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Man, all the preparation. Remember all the preparation? I don't remember any preparation that went into the wedding except get there at this time. That's what I remember, all right? Remember all the preparation ladies that went into the wedding? You know, here you are. We've done several weddings here at the church since I've been here and, and uh, that kind of thing. And Man, those back doors swing open and that bride, dun, da, 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 dun, da, 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 dun, 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 and here comes the bride. Can you imagine, ladies, ladies, can you imagine your wedding day comes along and you're dressed in that nice, wonderful, beautiful white dress that you spent much, much money on trying to look perfect for that handsome groom waiting at the end of that aisle for you. Can you imagine, brides, if you, you open that door, you open that door to walk down that aisle and every lady in the church was wearing a wedding dress. Can you imagine that? What would you do? You'd go, have y'all lost your mind? What would you say? This is my day, not your day. And you may walk down that that, that, that uh, aisle with a smile on your face, but when you got to the end, you'd say to that groom, I'm going to kill every one of them. <laughs> Who invited your family here today? <laughs> why? Because it's what? It's your day. Now, why is it that we're comfortable walking in church and everybody's supposed to be looking at God, but they're too busy looking at us? Amen. Because how we present ourselves will affect how other people worship. Now, I, I don't like to have an upset bride. Amen. 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 I don't like it. But I definitely don't want God upset at me. Amen. Because I'm keeping other people's eyes off of Him and putting them on myself. What did He say? How did He say we're to run the race? How are we going to run the race of the Christian life? Looking unto Jesus. But when we don't, we're not right in this area of modesty, listen to me. I, I don't care what he says, ma'am. Every red-blooded American man that God created has the same issue. Amen. 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 And if he don't, then you set appointment up at the doctor because there's a problem. All right? By the way, that's the way God made us. All right? And I'm, not, and I'm not telling you, ma'am, I'm not telling you that, that every issue in that area is your fault. Don't, please don't misunderstand that. But I sure don't want to be the reason that people don't worship the Lord. I sure don't want to be the reason as a pastor. Can you imagine if I showed up tonight, shirt untucked, never brushed my teeth, beer on my breath, hair not combed, not showered in a few days? Can you imagine, what would you get out of the service? You know, I, I, I'm not against somebody who, who doesn't wear a tie to church. That don't bother me one bit. But it's all right if you do. It's all right if you try to look sharp. I think a preacher ought to still look like a preacher. Not like a model for Calvin Klein, Amen. My wife, she wouldn't mind that, but, you know. <laughs> I think a preacher ought to look like a preacher. I know this is old school, but old school's all right. Old school got you where you are. 
And if it was good enough 100 years ago, it's still good enough now. Don't be the distraction that keeps people from listening to God. Don't be the distraction. I know it's 610. It'll be all right. Clock's still there. We started at 5. You won't even recognize it this week. Amen? Don't be the distraction. Guard that testimony. By the way, I got a daughter. I know she's 17. I know there are young men in this church. I was a young man. My wife says, honey, why do you get so stirred up about certain things? Because I was a young man. You never was a young man. I don't care what Caitlyn Jenner said. Amen? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. I said, I said, listen, I know what them sorry low-down scoundrels are thinking. I may be 40, brother, but me and brother Donnie will whip you. Amen. I know how it works. What am I trying to do? I'm just trying to help us tonight. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to say, listen, when we come in those doors, we come in those doors, we're here to worship the Lord. Let's not any, let anything distract us from that. I'm talking about, listen, I'm just trying to help. Now, leadership, when you take a role of responsibility, I appreciate the way the ladies were dressed this morning when they got on the platform to sing. I appreciate the way the ladies were dressed this morning when they got on the platform to sing. And if you're going to get on the platform to sing, dress right. That's a different story than, hey, let's, let's present ourselves right. You're taking a position of leadership. You're teaching a Sunday school class. Our Sunday school teachers have a leadership commit, a covenant that they sign and say, hey, these are some of the things, that I'll, the guidelines that I'll follow. Why? Because they're in a position of leadership. My way, don't get, you say, I, I, that's, just, that's just legalism. Then, then you tell me, uh, then, then Gulfstream's legalistic. Because I promise you, when you go over there to work tomorrow, you're not going to walk in a pair of blue jeans and shorts uh, and a uh, tank top and say, hey, I'm here to work on the jets. They'll say, uh, you, you might want to turn around and go back home. <laughs> Amen, Brother Tony? Yeah. Right. Then McDonald's is legalistic. Yeah. Here, you're going to wear a blue shirt and a blue hat, and you're going to wear black pants, and you're going to take 30 minutes to get him a double cheeseburger. <laughs> sure. When you take a role of responsibility, that's a different story. But I'm talking about the house of God. When you come in here, you come in here to worship the Lord. When we come here, we come in here to look at God, not everything else. God said, I created it for a reason. I created it for a reason. What did the Bible say? The Bible said Adam and Eve, Genesis there. He said, he said your, your, the way you present yourself is going to affect other people's ability to worship the Lord. Did sin affect anybody else's ability to worship God? Did it? You know, there are only two people that are ever placed in a perfect environment. Adam and Eve. You know what they did? They messed it up for the rest of us. How you behave, how you present yourself will affect other people's ability to worship God. Take very seriously the opportunity God's given you. Honor Him. He said, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let's pray together tonight, can we?